Now that we've learned a little bit about the role of the hippocampus in creating long-term memories, it's time to now just sort of put it together, creating a memory in school, building strong memory traces. So let's sort of apply what we've learned. So let's see what happens uh, over the course of, of two study sessions. And we'll look at the human brain. We've got our cortical systems here and the hippocampus. After the first study session, we've got weak memory traces in the cortex, strong memory trace in the hippocampus. And then we go to sleep. And during sleep, we have our two phases of sleep. We're going to consolidate the cortical memory traces, we're going to strengthen them and link them together. And this is because we're firing up the hippocampal memory traces and using those uh, memory traces to stimulate the cortical memory traces. And then we're going to refresh the hippocampus, going to weaken the hippocampal memory traces in preparation for new learning. Well, hopefully, there is some new learning. We're getting ready for our second study session. So at this point, though, we have, as a result of one study session, we've strengthened some cortical memory traces due to consolidation, and we're refreshed and ready to go for our second study session. Okay, now we're ready for our second study session. So we're going to be studying the same information, so the cortical areas, the same memory traces in the cortex, will simply be reactivated again. We're processing the same information, but now we're making a new hippocampal memory trace. And this is the beauty of the hippocampal system. Remember, it gets wiped clean, and so then it's a, a different set of hippocampal neurons that will be responsible for making the new memory trace of the same information. And then we go to sleep again. Now the new hippocampal memory trace is reactivated, replayed. So now we can strengthen the cortical memory traces even more, connect them together even stronger. And we're starting to build very strong cortical memory traces. And then we weaken those new hippocampal memory traces again in preparation for new learning. So as a result of two study sessions now, we have good, strong cortical memory traces that can be accessed, reactivated, retrieved by the cortical memory systems without the need of the hippocampus. So after only one study session, we're not yet really well educated. Uh, we've got weak cortical memory traces, and in fact, we will be dependent upon the hippocampus to access that information in our cortex. So what we want to get to is the next stage. We want to get to a situation where we have strong cortical memory traces. This is the well-educated mind. Successful retrieval from the cortical memory uh, retrieval systems. And we don't need that hippocampus any longer to find and activate those cortical memory traces. All right, now let's look at the implications for school. Wise learners fight against forgetting. So we'll use our diagram here to illustrate some of the recommended study tactics. First, we need to be repeating our study sessions. Right? It's only with repetition that we're going to take relatively weak cortical memory traces and make strong cortical memory traces. We've got to study multiple times. Of course, then we're going to get the benefits of consolidation during sleep. But now why is it that we have to do repeated study sessions? And we said because cortical neurons possess lower plasticity, so they need multiple activations to grow strong synapses. Now on the flip side, if we consider the hippocampus, remember we said there's high plasticity neurons there. But that means that we have an interesting recommendation here. We want to use short study sessions. See, the hippocampal memory traces get strong early in the study session, so prolonged study of the same information loses effectiveness. So this is something that lots of students don't pay attention to or don't even know about the hippocampus, is that when you're studying the same information for two hours, three hours, you're likely wasting a lot of your time because the hippocampal memory traces have already uh, enjoyed their strengthening uh, early in the study session. So we want to use short study sessions. Of course, we want to get good sleep. Why? Because it's during sleep when we're doing important memory processing. We're doing consolidation using hippocampal memory traces to strengthen cortical memory traces and then refreshing the hippocampus for new learning. And if we if we have multiple study sessions separated by sleep, you see, then we can just build and build and build strong cortical memory traces. So again, sleep is doing two important things, consolidation and refreshing the hippocampus. And if we space out our study sessions, then we get the benefit of sleep in between. And another way to think about this is by spacing out study sessions, we're refreshing the hippocampus. 
you see right after a study session we've already got these strong hippocampal memory traces but when we go to sleep and refresh now our hippocampus is ready for new learning and it can be new learning about the same information we then make a new hippocampal memory trace that gets used during consolidation that night and we build our cortical memory traces and keep our hippocampus refreshed but that's the value of spacing out study sessions we want to uh, study when we uh, when the hippocampus is refreshed that's when we want to do new studying if we've already got strong hippocampal memory traces because we've been studying for two hours don't keep studying for a third hour wait just take a break ideally you know go to sleep and study the next day now the the value of uh, of having sleep in between study sessions is that our hippocampus is refreshed and when our hippocampus is refreshed we're using different hippocampal neurons to make the new memory trace when studying the same information but let's say you're in a pinch you had poor time management and so you just have to do all your studying the day before the assessment well here the recommendation would be to take breaks so maybe uh, do one study a short study session and then take a 45 minute break and that break is going to increase the chances that you'll have a different set of hippocampal neurons recruited for that second memory trace for the second study session so if you're in a pinch and you have to do all your studying one day before an assessment use shorter study sessions separated by breaks but ideally we want sleep the ideal thing is that we want to separate our, our study sessions by sleep so we get the benefits of consolidation and we are nicely refreshing our hippocampus and finally we don't want to be cramming if you study once you'll make weak memory traces and even if you do go to sleep because the test is the next day you'll strengthen those cortical memory traces but you'll only have this strength here um, after one study session and one round of consolidation during sleep when if you budgeted your time better yet better time management you were planning and you were disciplined then you could have had really strong cortical memory traces because you studied multiple times separated by sleep you could have this but if you cram, you're going to be left with weaker memory traces. Uh, at the level of neurons, the idea is you're going to, you know, cramming leaves you with relatively weak synapses, weak memory traces, when you could have had much stronger synapses, much stronger memory traces with repeated study. So cramming invites both forms of forgetting. We're not spending much time building strong memory traces, so we'll have storage failure that can lead to forgetting over time. And then we're not spending a lot of time practicing retrieving that information because, again, we just study once before the, the night before the test. And so we're going to quickly lose access to those weak memory traces that we did form. So understand a bit about the brain sheds light on some good study practices and now we can understand why certain study practices are recommended by psychologists.